and welcome to an India Today special broadcast that comes to you from southern Israel. I'm Gaurav Savan. This part of Israel is seeing intensification of conflict. Even as we speak, you can hear not just massive military movement that's happening behind me, but also the boom of 155 mm howitzers that are going off from this side and rockets that continue to pound this place. Rockets that come from Hamas-controlled Gaza Strip. Even on day seven of the conflict between Israel and Hamas, the terrorist organization retains the capability to strike and strike hard between Sidorot, where we are, and Eshkelon, which is just behind me. You have multiple rocket attacks from Hamas-held territory, which is actually disrupting Israel's movement to an extent to the forward areas, of course, only occasionally. The Iron Dome system effectively has taken down most of those rockets, but people have been asked to move to safer areas. But earlier today, I was at the front lines of this conflict where there was a massive movement of Israel's armored columns from the Markava tanks to the infantry combat vehicles to troop carriers. We bring you this ground report. India Today team right now is at the front lines of this conflict. These are the powerful Markaba tanks of the Israeli army and these tanks have now been mobilized. We are right at the front lines. Watch around me as the howitzers, the tanks and the infantry combat vehicles of the Israeli army are both slowly getting mobilized and all of it is happening right now. After infantry combat vehicle and armor, once they have shown that they have their tolerance and their adversity is down, that is the time when the ground soldiers will move in and identify what is owner in the father. Yes, sir. This is the Tatsina Dekra. This is really the same thing. But now, the time is the same thing. The time is the अगर आप पिछले पहले पीछे देखें तो ये ग्रीन को नहीं बड़ी संख्या में इस रेल की सेना के टैंक अब एक लोकेशन से दूसरे लोकेशन में आगे बढ़ रहे हैं। This is the infantry combat vehicle and this is the rear. The door, the gate is at the rear and this is where troops inside goal set to go in. Depends on when they get their orders to move it completely. They're moving forward as per plan, very systematically, very slowly. The aim is to completely decimate the Hamas strongholds. Once they've been decimated from the skies and through artillery fire, then strengthen more territory. That's exactly what Israel has done in the past one week. They've been sure that there are no remnants of Hamas terrorists inside their own territory. The moment that was completely short, internal security, police, uh, paramilitary forces, they were being deployed, civil defense has been deployed, locals have been deployed, and these are those small infantry combat vehicles of the Israeli army, uh, all set, locked and loaded to go in. The tanks have moved, now the infantry combat vehicles are moving. So any time, any time now, the moment of instructions are given, Israeli forces will move in. India today is right at the front lines of this battle uh, in West Asia giving you the latest reports. We were the first to show you how air attacks were intensified, how artillery was pounding Hamas bases, how armor was moving forward and now how these infantry combat vehicles and behind them the special forces locked and loaded, ready to go and decimate the Hamas terror. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and the Army Chief, they've both been very clear. This country is on the same page with one objective. That one objective is to completely decimate the Hamas and ensure that Gaza Strip can never be used to launch terror attacks on this part of Israel. The southernmost part of Israel remains most vulnerable. But despite all this movement, despite the air attacks and the artillery pounding, ground troops will have to go in because even now Hamas retains the capacity to strike. Rocket attacks have been happening inside Israel. Uh, even yesterday, till very late at night, we were near Sridot and rocket attacks were happening. Though the Iron Cope was able to 
uh, interdict and, and they destroy most of the uh, incoming rockets uh, in the sky itself. But a couple of rockets did fall. One goes to a hospital, one on the road uh, uh, harmlessly. But at the same time, the threat of rocket attacks still remains. We've been speaking for the past half an hour and even before we got here, the armor movement was happening. Mechanized infantry columns have been moving, the special forces have been moving, the ground forces have been moving, and all in full body domain. It just shows how massive is Israel's response going to be. Uh, one of the officers we spoke to told us that this is the fastest ever mobilization in the history of Israel with 300,000 soldiers, with 3 lakh soldiers being mobilized in a couple of days, battle ready, locked and loaded and ready to go. That's exactly what Israel intends to do. This is day 7 of the deadly terror attack launched by Hamas in which 1,200 people were massacred, more than 1,200 and more than 3,000 injured. Israel is still counting its losses, but resolute in its will and decision to decimate Hamas and ensure that the Gaza Strip no longer poses a threat. Hamas no longer poses a threat to people living in this part of Israel. Gaurav Savant in southern Israel for India Today. The Hamas terrorist attack on Israel took place with military precision. And I, on detail, for example, when hundreds of terrorists came into the Israeli territory, whether in pickup trucks or in minivans armed to the teeth. There were other vans that followed full of ammunition. They were loaded to the teeth, armed to the teeth, and they had replenishments. They didn't have to go back to the Gaza Strip to get more ammunition. Vehicles carrying ammunition came with them. Additional rifles, their medical teams also came with them. But that's just one part of the story. Look at how they're making rockets, open source intelligence. India today's open source intelligence now is in a position to reveal that Hamas terrorists planned for this massive terror strike for close to two years from training of the terrorists on use of power gliders to getting rockets in place to have more than 5,000 rockets uh, being fired in this area just a couple of uh, hours and then continuing with those rocket attacks even on day 7 goes on to show the intensity of the preparations. That's not all. The terrorists had also all along planned to take hostages. We bring you more in this report. Civilians paying the highest price in the Israel-Hamas conflict. The terrorist group initiated it. Ordinary Israelis targeted, maimed and killed when Hamas launched its unprecedented guerrilla-style terrorist incursion into Israeli territory on October the 7th. Civilians in Gaza plunged into a crisis as the Israeli military bombs their territory, choking supplies to the tiny enclave, home to two million residents. On its part, Hamas has sought to portray civilian casualties as accidental, collateral damage. In statements issued to local outlets, the Hamas claims its so-called Palestinian freedom fighters aim to avoid targeting ordinary Israelis. Evidence, however, suggests otherwise. A purported 14-page operational document discovered on a Hamas operative's body within a pickup truck by first responders has been shared by an online group of first responders. Labeled top secret, apparently by Hamas, the document suggests attacks on civilians were part of a well-thought-out plan. A plan the Palestinian terror group hatched as early as October 2022. The strategy, as explained in the document, involved raiding Israeli settlements called kibbutz, the assault to be led by a commander, and two squads, each consisting of five attackers. The raids on the kibbutz, which are basically self-contained communities, carried out with precision. Now take a closer look at point seven. 
Hamas operatives led by their commanders specifically instructed to take soldiers and residents as hostages for negotiations later. A section in the same document noted potential presence of approximately 1,000 civilians in another Israeli settlement along the Gaza Strip. Survivors recount the horror they witnessed firsthand when the Hamas invaded Israeli territory briefly last Saturday. Many civilians accuse the Israeli government of failure. I want answers from the government. It's not possible. My service was there. There was always people prepared for things like that because it's the nightmare of all the soldiers there. It's not possible. The party was authorized by the IDF and by the police. This is something, it's not an accident. This, there's something more, more serious happening here. And we want question, we want answers to our questions from the government. Hamas's planning dossier provides a detailed insight into the intentions behind the attack. Why? 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 150 hostages currently in Hamas custody in the Gaza Strip. A plan written, drafted on paper and executed on the ground. With Ankit Kumar, Bureau Report, India Today. From Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to the American President to US Secretary of State Antony Blinken and now the Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin. Both America and Israel have made one thing very clear. Hamas is no different than the Islamic State or Daesh. Their tactics, their training, and the barbaric manner in which they've carried out terror attacks, the beheadings that have taken place, the rape of women before they were murdered, the fact that women were raped and burned alive, the fact that little children were beheaded. And Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has put out those images now in public domain. At near Tel Aviv, there is a military location where the coroners have painstakingly carried out the post-mortem of all the 1,200 plus victims of the terror attack and also the perpetrators of the terror attack. And when we spoke to some of those doctors, they were horrified by the barbaric manner in which these killings were carried out. We bring you more in this report. Burnt houses, blackened walls, and personal items scattered about. That is what remains of the Israeli kibbutz of Holit after it was attacked by Hamas militants. This is one of the several self-contained Israeli settlements close to the Gaza border. Israel claimed that Hamas militants not only killed people mercilessly during their attacking raid, they killed babies also hard to even explain exactly just the mass casualties that happened right here. In fact, the Israeli military says they still don't have a clear number, but I'm talking to some of the soldiers and they say what they've witnessed as they've been walking through these different houses, these different communities, uh, babies, their heads cut off. That's what they said. Gunned down, families completely gunned down in their beds. You can see some of these soldiers right now comforting each other. Many of them reserves uh, who jumped into action, leaving their own families behind as well, not knowing the sheer horror that they were about to come to. They say they've never experienced anything like this. This is nothing that anyone could have even imagined when you're walking through here. Baby cribs thrown to the side, doors thrown wide open. I mean, we had hundreds massacred, families wiped out in their beds and their homes, women brutally raped and murdered, over a hundred kidnapped, including children. And since we last spoke, the extent of this evil, it's only gotten worse. They, they took dozens of children, bound them up, burned them, and executed them. And it shook the world. It's not about the region. I truly believe, were there no Israel, no Jew in the world would be ultimately safe. It's the only ultimate guarantee. The only ultimate guarantee. 
the only ultimate guarantee. And folks, because of you, and I mean this sincerely, because you're speaking up, because of the intensity and the intellect and the brilliance you bring to this cause, I think we have a chance to end this in a way that is, it makes it very difficult for it to be repeated. I mean, I, I, I've been doing this a long time. I never really thought that I would see and have confirmed pictures of terrorists beheading children. I never thought I'd ever, anyway, I, uh, but there are countries in the region that are trying to be of some help, including Arab nations <clears throat> are trying to be of some help. But right after this, U.S. administration confirmed that neither the U.S. President Joe Biden nor his aides had seen pictures or had received confirmed reports of children or infants having been beheaded by Hamas. On 12th October, Israel released images of burnt, decapitated babies. The Jerusalem Post reported that these photos were shown to U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken during his visit to Israel by the Netanyahu government. But Blinken in his press address did not refer to these images. Defense ministers at NATO's Brussels headquarters were shown video from the Hamas attack on Israeli civilians by the Israeli counterpart Yov Galant on 12th October. About babies, they too remain silent. The main message was that uh, it just confirmed the brutality of uh, the attacks, uh, uh, how innocent uh, pil uh, uh, civilians, uh, um, uh, young people uh, were killed. And of course, it, 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 it's a, it's, it makes a strong impact on all of us when we see the uh, pictures and the video uh, describing the uh, consequences of this uh, horrific uh, attack against uh, Israel. Hamas militants certainly did take young and, in some cases, babies as hostages. But did they butcher babies in their cribs? It still is not confirmed beyond Israel government's claim. Bureau report, India Today. Across the border in the Gaza Strip, a massive humanitarian crisis is unfolding as Israel continues to pound Hamas strongholds. Thousands have been displaced. According to authorities in Palestine, 447 children have been killed, thousands homeless, without food and water. We bring you this report on how the crisis is now unfolding across the fence along the Gaza Strip. A shattered land. The familiar dust of destruction. Pieces of buildings, now no bigger than pebbles. Welcome to Gaza. Hell from the air spares none in this cursed land. And the first to pay are always Gaza's children. Six thousand bombs and counting have made Gaza a death scape. Where all things end. And most are too little to even see it. Grayed by the dust of war, they cling to life. Too stunned to even search for answers, or too dead for anything else to matter. The wail of parents is now Gaza's terrible theme. None of those cries will stop the bombing.
not by day and not by night encircled by tanks and darkness there is little light through the haze and yet even among the graves and the grief springs hope hope that in these vanishing seconds of joy the curse of gaza may be broken that its children may grow up and no mother may cry more than 1200 innocent israelis were killed in the hamas terror attack one would have thought that the entire world would have united to condemn not just the terror attack but also hamas as a terrorist organization but sadly that is not true it's not just in the middle east or pockets around where there are several who are standing with the hamas against israel but then there are also areas in in europe and in the united states of america for example in france there were protests in favor of uh, of of the terrorist it seems also uh, protests on university campuses in the united states of america clearly there's a big battle ground in the world even as you see these images behind me of israeli army movement and massive israeli army movement that is taking place towards the borders here The war between Israel and Hamas has left the world divided. Protests have erupted across the globe. Some are supporting Israel, others are in solidarity with Palestinians. After Sydney illuminated the Opera House in the colors of the Israeli flag, hundreds of Palestinians marched to the iconic building with flares and set Israeli flags on fire. Anti-Semitic slogans were also raised. The United States is on alert. Campuses in America have become flashpoints with protests over Israel-Hamas war raging on. At the Columbia University, two groups of students, one backing Israel, another supporting Palestine, faced off. People in Israel are suffering. Our family in Israel is suffering tremendously. I mean, you know, we we take for granted here in America that we have schools. We have we send our kids to schools. We send our kids to we send our kids to synagogues. We send our you know we have, we, we just live a free life. Um, and it's starting to change over here. Things are getting very scary over here, and we're starting to feel a little bit of how they feel. every single day over there threatened today i feel like the cuny they need to be more responsible they need to speak up for palestine they they need to condemn what israel is doing it's not okay and we have so many years of history that is just completely being ignored and i feel like that by speaking up today we can really bring a change the ability to launch thousands of missiles and while university officials blocked public access to the campus many took to the streets of new york several hundred people defied a police ban and demonstrated in paris to denounce israel's military actions in gaza many wore palestinian flags around their shoulders and chanted we are all palestinians Riot police later sprayed tear gas and water cannons, chasing the crowd away. France has now banned pro-Palestine rallies. Palestine will be free. Palestine will be free. Pro-Palestinian protesters also staged demonstrations outside the U.S. consulate in Johannesburg. Hundreds of demonstrators gathered in the heart of Brussels in a powerful show of support for Palestine. The crowd carried Palestinian flags, images of the bombardment in Gaza, pictures of children and journalists who were killed and chanted freedom for Palestine. Rallies took place in the capitals of South Korea and Japan too. In South Korea's capital Seoul, outside the Israeli embassy, hundreds of people staged a rally to denounce Israel for what they called oppression of Palestinians. 
some demonstrators gathered near the Israeli embassy in Japan to call for an end to Israel's bombing of Gaza. Many of them carried placards written in English and Japanese calling for peace and an end to the violence. The century-old conflict has created new fault lines in an already fractured world. Bureau Report, India Today. The situation on ground here in southern Israel remains extremely tense. There's massive movement. As you can see right behind me, Israeli forces are moving right to the front lines. But then the police and other forces are also protecting the interior areas, whether it's areas around the Zikim Beach or in Ashkelon. The threat is not just from the Hamas rockets. The threat is also from power gliders, and Hamas terrorists with assault rifles coming in to carry out more terror strike, harming not just Israeli civilians, but also Israeli forces as they move in big numbers towards the borders. We will continue to track developments on this big story, but that is all I have for you on this special broadcast that comes to you from Esderot in southern Israel, as you hear the boom of this gunfire, these howitzers that are pounding almost relentlessly. We will continue to report from Ground Zero, but for the moment, many thanks for watching and for all the latest news and updates. Keep watching 